Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Faust. We are literary agents at Bookends who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. And this is actually a video I don't think we've ever done before. We have not. Right. So we are giving you a behind the scenes look, a breakdown, if you will, of a publishing house and all the different departments there and what you might expect they're doing, especially when you're working with them so you can have a better understanding. Um, okay, so I think we should, our, our order is a little off. I feel like we should start with editorial. Yeah, start, let's walk authors through the process. Yes, yeah. Department by department, when they get sort of passed on to the next department. Yes, okay, so we're gonna start with editorial. Editorial are the first folks that are gonna receive your book. So our job as agents is to submit books to publishers for consideration. We are submitting to editors, editorial assistants, editorial directors, the whole gamut of rank, and they are part of the editorial department. Their job is to review submissions, bring them to acquisitions, edit them, and basically be the liaison of the book throughout the book's life with the agent editor, I mean, agent and author and all of their various teams. So editorial, I'm sure is probably the most familiar one for everybody. Yeah. You kind of know what they're doing, but they are like your person in the publishing house. That's your go-to contact. Yeah, in some houses they're called acquisitions editors, which makes sense. So um, yeah, they're the people that your, your person, your editor within the editorial department will be the person you become closest to, you know, the most um it probably it that's your one go-to yeah throughout this the, entire process in some cases you may not even talk to some of the other people but your editor will be the one giving you all that information yep they're the front line and the main curators of the list mm -hmm. and they're the people we talk to most too obviously yeah of course okay so now your book has been acquired right and there's a whole acquisitions meeting we'll talk about that in another video um, your book has been acquired and all of the deal terms that your agent has negotiated and you have agreed to are input into a system or sent to the contracts department. And we have a wonderful team of smart people who draw up the contract that the publisher uses with the author, incorporating all of the terms that we've included. If you They're have an agent, you will never have to deal with the contracts department. Right. Your agent will do all of this for you. Be happy for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. They're wonderful people, but it's it's confusing words. The contracts department, they're taking those terms, they're making up your draft of the contract, and they're sending it to us for our review. Our job is to review, to give any of our feedback, requested changes, or anything that looks incorrect or in consistent with what we've agreed to. And then we have a back and forth negotiation with the contracts department to get that contract to a place where we feel you are ready to look at it and sign it. Uh, yeah, for, for perspective, there are two levels of negotiation. The first round we do with the editorial department, the editor who offers, we will do the upfront negotiations on the deal terms. And then when it goes to the contracts department, we'll do a whole nother round of negotiations on the contract language. Yes. Yeah. So it's a long process. That's why it takes so long for you to get your contract to sign. Um, so that's the contracts, the contracts associate that you're working with. That's their job. They also, on the other side, handle things like reversions and any amendments or split checks or anything like that to your contract. So if a contract needs to be changed at any point, they will be the ones, just like they're drafting your contract, to draft your amendment, send it through, route it for signature with you and all of the necessary signees at the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever want to get your rights back for a book, we would send them your reversion request and they would process it, look at everything as per the contract and then answer you. So their job is anything legal that is going on a piece of paper, that's basically their job. Yeah, more or less. But the second department that I'm gonna bring up that didn't make the list, but now would be a good time, is publishers also have a legal department. One thing to note is most people working in contracts are not lawyers. The legal department is something that might happen far down the road and maybe not for everybody. But if your book, especially nonfiction, needs a legal review, or if there are obviously legal issues with your book, that would happen with the legal department. And they're also the ones, contracts. if I'm not mistaken, they're also the ones who are really drafting that agreement and like the boilerplate agreement, right? And making the language in the first, first place. place. Yeah. Yeah. And the contracts are the people who do and all the hands on work, yeah. the really hard work. Yeah. Um, okay. I just added one to our list, Jessica, because we missed it. But in the meantime, you've got the accounting department. 
These are all the wonderful people who are responsible with entering your book into the accounting system, loading the advance, loading your royalty rates, making sure you're getting paid your advance, and also when the book comes out, calculating your royalties, creating a royalty statement, and dispersing that out to you. So I added that there because of the advance section, but they're the ones that are paying us, and they send a remittance to you, to you or your agent, depending on if you have an agent, and that tells you what you're getting paid for on the book. And again, not likely people you will ever correspond with. Correct. They're the, they're the secrets behind the scenes. Yes. Um, okay. So now you've written your book, you've worked with your editor, you have finished it. It's ready to go to what we call production or what I learned today, sometimes called managing editorial. Yes. Yeah, some as different houses. There's actually not a universal naming of this. So some houses call some departments slightly different things than others. Yeah. So this is the team and we actually have a great video with Amanda Jan on our channel that talks a lot about production and I learned a ton from it, but these are the people that are deciding so many things about your book. And again, that you're not really likely to be in contact with your editor is usually in contact with, but they're deciding things like trim size, cover specs and stuff like that. Your paper, your paper weight, your font type, all of that stuff, um, your schedule really of when the book needs to be delivered, when it has to go to the printer. They're in charge of all of those fun. What things. happens if you miss your due date? What happens to the schedule? Right. Whether they can keep the book, whether they have to move the book out of the schedule, they are in charge of all of that. Yes, they are like the, the puppet masters of the book, making sure that everybody delivers what they need to them on time right. in order to actually make your product. And it's not just you that they're in charge of in terms of you delivering on time. Well, they're not in charge of you, but it's not just your due date. It's the due date for the copy editor. They also manage, hire, and work with the copy editors. Proofreaders, they manage, hire, work with them. The They will manage the schedule for the cover artist, the co cover copy. Everybody that has to deliver something to make this manuscript into a physical book they manage the schedule for all of that so there could be a ton of moving pieces because oh. you could technically have five six people working on your book all of them have to hit those deadlines including there are project managers mm -hmm. yep. yes um okay so from there we're also working with the design team the people that are making the decisions about the cover and, and what it's going to look like. And of course they're in consultation with a lot of other departments, but they're all of them. really almost yeah, all of them. All of them. <laughs> even legal can have a say yeah. in that, to be honest. So it could be all other departments except for maybe accounting. Yeah. right. But even contracts, because depending on your contract clause and what sort of approvals and consultations you have, they might be in touch yeah. with them. Yeah, but they're they're like our creative designers. They're the ones that are overseeing how the cover is going to look, the general feeling, the vibe, the color palette, all of that stuff. Also, the inside of the book. They work with production to determine whether there are any, you know, um, designs on the chapter headings, any illustrations, anything like that. They are working. And then for Kidlit, they're part. The art directors are part of that team too, and deciding who the illustrator will be. You know, all of the the page count, all of that stuff comes into it. Yep. Um, so that's your design team and hopefully they're making you a wonderful cover. And then I have to say, usually they do. Yes. All the, whatever, thousands of books we have represented. It is a small handful where we did this with the cover. Yeah. It's very, yeah. rare, I feel. Um, okay. So we've got four more departments left and now we're more on the side of things where, your book is a book and it's going to be coming out and your readers are going to be seeing it. Um, so let's start, should we start with sales? Yeah, I mean, the next four, we'll talk about sales, sub rights, publicity and marketing are all sort of coming into play about the same time, which is roughly six months before your book publishes. And that's when they all get looped into the process. They may have some feedback on the cover. Actually, no, not till this six month point, will they? But um, they may have some feedback initially when the book is bought by the editor, but for the most part, it's six months before pub when they are brought in. Yeah, and they're all consulted usually in the acquisitions process too to determine whether the book can be... Sometimes. Sales, no? Not always. Ah, good. I didn't know that. Mm 
Um, but yeah, so your sales team, those are the folks that are responsible for getting your books into bookstores and all of these other special places that you might find a book. Um, they are responsible for things like Barnes and Noble sales and, and all of these other bookstores, but also what we call special sales. So if you've written a book about bikes, it might get you into a bike store, things mm -hmm. like that. That's their job. And they're overseeing getting your book into places where it can then be sold to consumers. One thing that's really interesting that we've seen over the past, I don't know, 10 years is sales is having more and more of an impact on the cover design. And that, in my memory, didn't used to happen quite as often. But now what we're finding is more and more frequently sales might bring the book to, let's say, Barnes and Noble and come back with feedback that says this isn't going to work. And it could be because there's another book that's too similar or they're seeing, Barnes and Noble is seeing that nobody's buying house or books with bikes on it anymore. So we can't put a bike on it or, you know, hey, let's highlight this more because everybody likes Adirondack chairs, make that bigger, whatever it is. We're seeing that sales is having more and more of an impact on cover design. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So then there are these two departments, which are often, I think, conflated, but they are different. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start with publicity. Publicity are the folks that are the, what I learned uh, from another publisher today with the way that they phrased it was they're responsible for outreach and for things that maybe don't cost money. So things like getting the book in the hands of reviewers, in the hands of media, uh, radio, interviews, all of that stuff, that is publicity. Anything that comes to them without having to pay for it, that's what they're responsible for, for getting that sort of organic outreach based on the book. That's the way I always describe it. Publicity is free and marketing costs money. Yeah. I, well, you see, I never had that handy dandy way to, to describe right. it. I would always that's break down bad. the kinds of things they do. And then I heard another uh, a, a publicist at Scholastic say, we do the free stuff. And I was like, that is how you say it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yep. um, on the flip side, you have marketing. Marketing handles the paid stuff. Stuff like ads, stuff like creating assets, digital assets, things like that, helping you with your events and all of that so but also i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt you marketing also does things like um what are called step backs at stores so if you ever see the cardboard holder with the book title and the author's name on top and all the books in it that's done through marketing they'll work with sales obviously to get it in the stores but that's done through marketing when publishers do a catalog that they send out to bookstores of all their books for that season that's all done with marketing because it costs money yes so publicity, free marketing, money. <laughs> it is helpful. It is a helpful way for authors, especially when you're starting that process to be like, all right, who would I even ask? Mm -hmm. um, and when in doubt, you can always go to your editor. Yeah, always. And no matter what, always loop in your editor to everything. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so this last department is the subsidiary rights department. That's the department that is responsible for licensing the rights that we've given to the publisher that are not your your print book rights though sometimes they can be but things like audio translation if we're going to publish the book around the world in a different language um things like book club large print all of those sorts of rights that are another format of the book that handle is handled by subsidiary rights department and they're the ones that are just like your agent would pitching the book abroad pitching your book to different publishers handling those contracts and then passing that information along to to the accounting department so that you can get paid for it on your next statement yep. and also to your editorial department so that you can know about it. Yep. So if you ever think your publisher is not doing the work for you, there are all of these departments that are doing all of this work um, and for every single book. Everyone, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot of books, especially when you think about how many books come out per year per publisher. Yeah. It's people working constantly. And maybe it might help you understand a little bit why this process takes a lot of time too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we hope it was helpful. Don't Love forget to one. like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.